Hi guys. So if we're walking Valentino on a slip lead, it's important that we place it in the right spot for one, his neck safety, but also two, that it is the most effective. Um, this statement is high and tight in the training community where his slip lead is. Now, I don't want you to make it tight, but what it, why we say high and tight is because we want it behind their ears. So right behind the nice little occipital lobe right here, we're just gonna pull that slip lead pretty much right underneath his chin. I'm gonna pull it up here. And then this little notch that comes with your slip lead, you're just gonna put it down. Now, I can still stick two fingers in here, um, I, it shouldn't be tight where I have to like wiggle my hand in, um, but it should generally stay right behind his head. And if there's a little bit of slippage, and I did get it bright enough once you can see it, if there's a little bit of slippage, that's okay. We just don't want it down here or down here on his, down here on his neck because that's where we get trachea issues. Now, the point of a slip lead, um, or how I like to describe it, is that this is communication. This is a lot of conversation. So when you walk him in a slip lead, one hand is gonna be the anchor. So this never changes. This is an anchor in the, in the water. This hand is your talking hand. So whether he's on the left or right side, it doesn't matter. If you wanna pick that he's gonna always walk on the left, so let me know and we can reinforce that. But the idea behind this is that as we're walking, he needs to be stay in line with your hip. So Valentina, come here. You find some treats? You probably found some treats. Um, but the idea is that his body is going to be in line with yours. So ideally, tip of his nose to the back of his hip, this is as much wiggle room or leverage he's going to have. He shouldn't be ahead of you. If he's ahead of you, game over. This is a privilege to be far away from you. Right now, he's kind of like a toddler that lost his privilege. Nope, you're mine now. Now, when you have a six foot leash, um, that's where sometimes you can put a knot. I think I made a knot in the blue one. You can put a knot in that leash. You know that's where he fits comfortably with you guys. Um, and we'll talk about going potty walks and stuff like that. But the idea is this is where we're walking. Now, when we're doing this, so if I'm going to walk backwards, he has to pay attention to me. So I'm going to give him tug tug with me, good boy, Valentino. And then we're going to start walking forward. So, and then. As I move, tug, tug, hey, good boy. I can suck him in, and then we can start walking. And if I walk backwards, I'm gonna give him that leash, give him that opportunity to figure it out himself. Good boy! And then let's walk. Because when I change directions, he has to pay attention. I'm not calling him, I'm not asking him to pay it. Like, what are we doing? Good boy, Valentino, yes! Now the reason why I say this is the talking hand and this is the anchor hand, you'll notice that this always pretty much stays by my side. This hand can suck in that leash and keep him on the left side or keep him right here. Valentino, good. So as he's coming to me, I'm gonna take it, slide it down so he's in the position. Now if he pulls, that's where I'm gonna give him a tug and release. It shouldn't be a lawnmower motion. Uh, <laughs> correction, that's not what we want. The idea is that Dogs learn by the release of tension, the tension in and of itself. So when I give them a, hey, pay attention, it is literally like a shirt tug. Um, yeah. So here's an example of me doing that tension and release, really getting him engaged. I highly recommend doing this two minutes before you go on a walk, just to get him to like, oh, right, this is what we're doing. Um, great ways to reinforce and get him turned on and listening before you actually go outside. Now, in here in a calm environment, he's pretty good. We've, we've established, hey, when I feel the tug, I have to walk closer to that human. Um, but when you're outside, uh, there are two ways to do, or three ways to do corrections. First way is that tug and release, pay attention. If you hit three of those, generally within quick succession, then we're gonna do a bigger correction. So that bigger correction will be one of two things. It can be you give him the whole leash and you start walking backwards, suck in that leash, okay, now we can start going. So he's going further away from the thing he wants. But you can also do, give her some space, good boy, boy. Is that whatever side he's on, so here, we're walking right here, I'm gonna turn into him. I'm gonna use, he's right at my kneecap, a little bit of my thigh, but basically I'm gonna, no, this is my, good boy. I'm not shoving him, I'm not pushing him, I'm just, 
kind of cutting him off, like, nope, this is mine. And he takes it pretty well. He's just like, okay. Um, the idea by doing those circles is you're claiming it as yours. Now, I don't want you to be doing circles in your walks because you might get dizzy, but the idea is having one of those two options where you walk backwards, come on, good boy, and then you can walk forwards, or if he's being per persnickety, nope, what you're gonna do? Yes, good boy, <gasps> this good boy. Right now, I only want you to focus on those kind of commands of, of communication. There's a couple other spins and turns that we can add into it, but the idea is that he's not respecting your communication here with this. He needs to pay attention to the human. Right now, it's all about his walk, his exploring. He gets to do what he wants to do. And really, right now, his walks are going to have to be your walks, um, which may sound a little silly because really, honestly, they're his walks in the, in the long term. But the idea is that this is yours. You are the resource or the gateway for the resource that he wants. So it is his right to sniff, to, to go potty, to get that exercise but it's a privilege to get move anywhere I want to go. It's a privilege to sniff everything. It's a privilege to pee on everything. Um, so you're gonna break it up into bite-sized pizzas for him, so that way he does not get to control it. Does that make sense? So here's us working outside. He put the brakes on. Um, I wasn't quite sure what was causing him to just fight me. Um, so I did a little bit of tension on the lean and eventually I pulled out the treats and he was like, okay, I'll do it. Um, if he does this on you on walks, let me know. I know in passing he's done some weird things with, with walking skills, but you're going to watch me. I do a couple turns. You're going to see my tug and release. And one of the things that I didn't mention earlier is basically rewarding him to be at your hip so that that position of next to your body is a very good thing. I do have a clip, another viewpoint of it in a little bit where you can see how he responds to it. Once he realized food was coming out of my hand and he was walking right next to me, he was all about it. Um, so the idea is that we're going to pair a positive association with walking right next to you, but also there is a little more adversive when he's pulling and not listening. So it really balances kind of the scales out that he's in as much control as we are. Um, so it's kind of an interesting where he was putting on the brakes. And I like to include things where you see me struggle or see us have fails. Um, us have fails because you're not alone. <laughs> Truly and honestly, this is a pass. Um, this is also apologies. You may hear my, one of my sons in the background talking to me. Um, but this is, I like to include the failures because that way you get to see the good and the bad too. Um, uh, here you can see him excited cause he realized, Ooh, I get treats with this. Um, so we'll keep working on this. I'll send you another video tomorrow of how his progression goes and how to practice a little bit more too, but hang tight and watch it from the other, uh, perspective. So here you can really see where his body and face are. Um, I'm not really doing a ton of tension and release. I do a couple spins on him, um, but it's for the most part, he's self-regulating because he has a reward in there. Um, one tricky thing that I like to do is I'll do a turn, but as the dog turns, as they come into me, there's a treat waiting for them and they're like, oh, okay, this is the spot I need to be in. Um, now, you could use his breakfast, you can use his dinner um, to help him focus if you wanted to do it for those walks. Um, but, and also doorways, he has to sit and wait before you go through them. So that's a good practice to, again, turn on that brain. I have to think. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys tomorrow.